Ozzy Jerk joins me on the line right now. Ozzy, there's a lot of stuff i got to get to, but I like it when I can mix something about real estate with uh, something popular. And uh, I love Stephen Levitt, a uh, young guy, a young economist, University of Chicago, but of course famous for his book Freakonomics and all the follow-ups, more Freakonomics, Freakonomics in your breakfast, Freakonomics when you wake <laughs> up in the morning, whatever he did. But I like that he was here, or was out in Vancouver, rather. He's out in Vancouver this past week, and he did Freakonomics and real estate. Yeah, you know, he's sort of interesting because his, his, he says that economics is at the basic, the study of incentives, you know, how people get what they want or need, especially when other people want or need the same thing. Like, in other words, we are incentivizing everything. You just talked about the incentives that um, one of our largest uh, companies in Canada seems to be getting from both the Quebec and the federal government, you know, so that's what he's talking about. Well, he was here at the Red, the real estate development talk uh, uh, just a couple of days ago, and he said the city should chill out on its housing crisis. <laughs> Easy he for him to say he's not living here. <laughs> well, but he says a beautiful city that has where lots of people want to move to and is rated very highly worldwide, and high housing prices is a pretty good problem to have, he said, because I come from Chicago where he said the current crisis is the highest murder rate in the U.S. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, so oh, it is interesting. So he, Did he have any? Well, so he's looking at the supply side, which is absolutely correct because we're not going to stop uh, in Canada immigration. And uh, if you look at just the uh, Vancouver market, the Greater Vancouver market, I think they're getting in 2,500 people uh, a month, a new you know new people. And if you want the alternative, ask the people uh, who are in the real estate business in Calgary over the last couple of years, uh, you know, and that's the difficult side. So what is he, you know, he's, he's focusing on supply, but what's he saying specifically? Well, the big thing specifically that you have to lower the regulatory cost of the building of new homes. And Mike, you have talked about this for the longest time. You look at the tax burdens and they're just, just a to build a house, never mind building a apartment block, and the time it takes, you know, the cost of money, et cetera, et cetera. If you lower the regular cost of building new homes and increase thereby supply, the housing problem that we have would be solved. Yeah, it's it's, and you know, I, I alluded to that actually uh, at the outset in my commentary uh, that you know we before we hand out money to different companies, we might uh, think about doing what we can. And one of the things is I mentioned was that uh, World Bank 2016 study called Doing Business, and Canada ranked 53rd. I mean, that's terrible when it came to how long it took to get uh, permits for building. Uh, I think it was 249 days. I mean, that's crazy. You know, I have a developer that wants to get something approved in Surrey. It it takes him years. I mean, some of the conferences at UDI, you know, the developers, the one thing they complain about, you know, my God, turn me down, but turn me down now. You know, it's this continuous waiting and from one department to another, and then there's nobody there, and and it just, it's mind-boggling. That all adds to cost, and because it adds to cost, there's no way when they're on the one side, government talks about affordability. On the other hand, they make it really unaffordable to build and then to buy. You know, it's it's one of the things that's interesting. We have a lot of focus on the federal government. I'm always talking about you have to look at the cumulative impact of three levels of government. And I don't believe any level of government gets off more scot-free than what happens at the municipal level and the impact they have in terms of constantly raising taxes, which takes money out of people's pockets that they could otherwise spend in the economy. But this aspect we're talking about, the regulations, uh, the delays that cause for the devil. And as you said, hey, you don't have to approve me, but let me know right away. Anyways, uh, switching gears, Ozzy. Uh, you yep. know, British Columbia, speaking of government intervening, uh, had this incentive program for first-time buyers. Well, it looks like it kind of worked out. Yeah, it's this five-year no-interest loan that to, to match the buyer's uh, down payment has become very popular. Sort of a thousand buyers applying for it in the first two months, and then most buyers have put down five percent, which the government then matches. Uh, what, do you, I mean, what's your take? Was it a good thing? Well, that, for me, it's, you know, you know, I, I look at all of the incentives we have in the past. I don't like it. You know, when we had the AHOP program, it gives us a shot in the arm. Lots of people come, but it's like dragging the buyer from the future into today. Some people mm-hmm. have no inter- interest in buying. Now they can afford it. And they do it. Then when the future comes, they are no longer there. And then we have usually a, a problem. And that, by the way, that is the same with uh, when people ask about one of the impacts of debt. They worry about non-payment. They worry about the amount of interest. But the other thing debt does, it's, it's just like me personally. If I borrow money right now and purchase something, I'm just taking from tomorrow's purchases, you know, and I'm bringing it forward. And that's what this uh, 
program does also. Yeah, and then in Australia, the first time Homer Grant offered sort of a cash payment subsidy, and subsequent studies found that there was a vacuum effect that pulled the demand yeah. forward and resulted in many buyers purchasing much earlier than they would of other high spots. And then the demand drops, drops in the long run back to come to the equilibrium. So it wasn't as effective as their hopes. I think they brought this in to offset the first time buyer, the enormous drop in sales. Now we have a very sharp drop in housing starts. So all that together is, is certainly helping the market right now, but I just, I certainly don't like it. I think it's artificially distorting the market. Well, the other thing is this, is that the public, you know, has this demand that government should do something. And they don't yeah. even care if it's effective, to be honest, you know, because they don't do any research on it. A lot of people just have these sort of knee-jerk reactions. And this is really be careful what you wish for in a lot of this stuff. Hey, Ozzy, give me a quick hot property before we go. Yeah, certainly. So, you know, we have a turnkey, ca- turnkey cash for deal in Mission. It's listed at 529, five bedrooms, three bathrooms. It's two suites. The income is 2300 The owner claims it can be increased uh, substantially by another $600. It's well-maintained. Separate suites, walk-in downtown, Mission close to West Coast to Press. That's our hot property this week, and it's been only four days on the market. I apologize. Sometimes people call the next day, and this in this crazy market, it's already gone. So this one is still available. <laughs> well, go to jurok.com, J-U-R-O-C-K, jurok.com. Click on the hot property button. These are just things that Ozzy sees that he thinks is worth you taking some further investigation. The key is you've got to do some further investigation on anything on a couple levels. Just see the property, the old, uh, uh, is it Peter Thomas was the Century 21 Ozzy? Yes. Yeah. And he always said you had to go see your property. And the other side, of course, is see where it fits in your own portfolio. Ozzy, you go out and have a, a, a safe and happy weekend. I know the golf season's coming, which is just my way of warning everyone. <laughs> Thank you. And I will try and get out, but not this weekend. And down you, I am actually not that bad. I mean, I know I'm better because I'm hitting fewer spectators. 